peanut butter is good. I don't know what's cuter, the baby sloth itself or the baby sloth eating a leaf. Yeah, oh, you there you go. This reindeer loves, oh, burped right in my face. Over the past four years, we have embarked upon many incredible adventures, and have certainly seen our fair share of creepy looking creatures. Who could forget the giant black sea slug? Oh my gosh, is it slimy! There's no question about it, that slug was an amazing creature, and we were lucky to find it. But you probably wouldn't say that gargantuan gastropod was exactly cute. And then there are the things we've run into that are just straight up nightmares. Remember this? Here we go. Ah! 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 That was an experience I won't soon forget, no matter how hard I try. And believe me, when it comes to the giant desert centipede, boy do I try to forget. But not all of our adventures feature creepy or slimy creatures. Some of my favorite moments have actually been with what I consider the cutest animals on our planet. So we decided to put together the top five cutest animals ever featured on the Brave Wilderness channel. Then as we began to construct the list, we realized, how do you choose just five? So instead, we decided to bring you the top eight cutest creatures. I hope you are all ready for a cuteness overload. Coming in at number eight, my favorite prickly little buddy the Mexican hairy dwarf porcupine, appropriately named Bud. Bud, look what Coyote has. It's a peanut. Oh, peanut butter is good. Come up here, look what I've got. It's nice working with a porcupine of this size. It's a little easier for me to get right up close without him getting too scared. And let's look at the fur. You see that? Real dark in coloration. This is what you'll get with this species. And underneath these guard hairs, a bunch of quills. Bud, do you think it would be okay if we show everybody at home your quills? I'm gonna take that as a yes. All right, watch this. Okay, I'm just gonna part this hair back very gently. Take a look at that. Can you see in there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what those are? Those are quills. And the bad thing about these quills is that they have reverse barbs. Those get into your snout or your hand and they dig deeper and deeper and deeper over time. So, what I'm not going to do today is get quilled by this little porcupine. Yeah, it's amazing to watch them eat, to see how his claws and his hands just grip that peanut. And you would think that he would just, you know, shove the whole thing into his mouth like a squirrel, but he's just very intricately chipping off piece after piece. Do you want the rest of this peanut? Here you go. I would have loved to have cuddled with Bud, but probably not the best idea considering all those needle sharp quills. Like the Mexican dwarf porcupine, our number seven pick is another adorable creature that is probably a little too scaly to snuggle with. But we sure love this little guy. Look at you, look at you, buddy. This little guy is way too close to the road. It's a leopard tortoise, either just crossed or is attempting to cross. I see you, I see you. I wanna be very, very gentle picking him up because I do not want him to pee, which is a defensive mechanism of these tortoises. There we go. Look at you. There you go, now you're coming out of your shell for us. How cute are you? That is so cool. You notice when it tucks into its shell, it has armored front legs, you see that? All of these legs are covered with very dense scales and they pull those legs in to block the face just like that, you see that? Now nothing can get to it. So it's all about tucking into your shell. Little tortoise, you know that it's not safe to cross the road, right? Many tortoises are unfortunately struck by cars and while they are rather speedy for a species, not faster than a car. So what we're gonna do is just safely move this little tortoise off into the underbrush here in the exact same direction that it was traveling and hopefully in the future it will avoid crossing roadways. That little leopard tortoise was super cute and a lot faster on his feet than you might imagine, but nowhere near as fast 
as number six on our list of cutest creatures. What I'm gonna do right now is turn my hand into a mouse. I'm gonna actually put it down in this hole and bury it in the grass, try to make some mouse noises, rustle this around, and see if I can get Lupin to come and pounce on me. You ready? Yep. Let's try this. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> Ow. And she bit right down on the tip of my finger, only to find that it isn't actually a mouse. Well, that was pretty cool. All right, well, apparently I can speak mouse. Haven't quite yet learned how to speak fox. <laughs> how cool is that? Every single time she thinks my finger's a mouse. And that's such a great hunting instinct for this baby animal to be able to learn that this is how I catch mice. I've got the GoPro set up on a gimbal and let's see if we can track down the baby red fox. Ready? <laughs> hey, there's one animal that has really worn me out. It is definitely the baby red fox. This thing's got more energy than any animal we've ever worked with. It wasn't easy to keep up with all that cuteness. And truth be told, that was also one of the most difficult episodes we ever filmed. You're so cute. You're such a kitty. For number five on our list of cutest creatures, it's snuggle time. Now, this baby river otter was recently orphaned, and the wildlife sanctuary that we're working with right now has taken him in and is tending to him. Hopefully he will be able to be released back into the wild, but if not, he's gonna have a very comfortable life here at the sanctuary. They are opportunistic feeders. A little one like this will be drinking milk, but when he gets bigger, he's gonna to wanna to be eating fish, snakes, frogs, anything that can find its way into that mouth is fair game. Oh, still thirsty? Want some more? There you go. Yeah, oh, you, there you go. Oh, look at that, scratching his belly. Look at him, scratching his belly. I think I formed a pretty good friendship with this otter at this point. You having a good day? A couple bottles of milk? Scratching your face on the grass. It's a tough life being an otter, you know? You stink, you know that? You absolutely stink, but I still love you. Oh, that's the spot, isn't it? Yeah, he loves that. That feels good, huh? All right, well, you've had your bottle of milk. Are you ready to go splash around in the creek? I think he's ready. All right, you lead the way. That baby otter was pretty stinky, but it sure was cute. I guess this is one of those rare times where you can actually use the phrase, so stinking cute. The next creatures on our cute list aren't exactly the right size for snuggling, but that doesn't mean they aren't adorable. Let's dive in to the number four spot. We've got manatees surrounding the boat right now. Try and be as quiet as possible. We don't want to disturb them. This is the moment of truth. I am. <sighs> Diving in with the manatees. This is gonna be awesome. This is where the fun began. And before I knew it, playtime was in full effect. From barrel rolls to belly rubs, we were having a blast. They are incredibly social animals and rely heavily on touch and sound for communication, especially between a cow and her calf. Cow and a calf, like right down here. Watch you back up a little bit. We'll go down, see if we can get a great shot. Being around youngsters, we were witness to several unique behaviors, including nuzzling, nursing, and cleaning. I even made friends with a little guy we named Douglas, who was absolutely smitten with our cameras. Right now, we have the most playful little baby manatee swimming around with us. There's no doubt about it, Dougie was definitely the highlight of our trip. Swimming with manatees was truly a life-changing experience. How could you not fall in love with those squishy faces? Number three on our list is one of the Australian Outback's classically cute creatures, the one and only koala. Hey, Banjo, let's do this. I'm gonna get in real close. And he's gonna just kind of put his hand up there. I want to support his backside. Let's go like that. Here we go, buddy. 
Up on down. Whoa, there we go. Just like cradling a baby, only much softer. Hi, Banjo. That's what we call the koala cuddle right there. Wow, it's so dense. Oh my gosh, the fur is incredible. You don't really realize it until it's actually on wow. you, but... It's almost like a lamb. I know, right? Like a lamb's wool, koala's wool, very, very dense. And a lot of animals, you think about having these coarse outer guard hairs, and he's just dense and brillowy all throughout. Oh my gosh, you are just so cute. I'm trying to talk rather quiet next to his ears. Look at the ears. Kind of reminds me of Gizmo from Gremlins with those big ears. And they do have excellent hearing. Look how they can kind of individually move each one of those ears, too. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. Ah, I can't handle it! That koala was so cute! And like the baby otter, he was a true stinker. You might not expect the next animal to make it on the list of cutest creatures, but after this bounding baby settled down, things got downright cuddly. Look at dad, his little nose just rested on my arm. I think he's had enough food this morning. He's probably getting tired. Now babies like this do sleep quite a bit. He may be getting tired. I can feel his head getting heavy on my arms. Oh, what a cute deer. And this is really comforting to him right now. Just a little scratch on the side of the neck. Oof. You gotta watch your eyes next to those antlers though. Fortunately, they're still pretty dull. So you take a hit in the face and I'm gonna be okay. Now Blitzen's eating a lot of plants this morning. Let's see if he would like some milk. Oh, look at that. Yep, clearly he's into milk. Wow, look at how fast this reindeer drinks milk. That is crazy. Yum, 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 oh my gosh. You are good at chugging milk, that is one thing for sure. I can see why Santa probably doesn't bring you into the house and you'd eat all of his milk and cookies, wouldn't you? And just like that, we have run out of milk. So everybody wanted to know why I grew a beard before Alaska. I figured I'd fit in perfectly, and as you can see, this reindeer loves, oh, burped right in my face. This reindeer loves cuddling up against my beard. Oh, he's going to sleep right now, I think. With snuggles and hugs like that, I can see why Santa loves his reindeer. So far, our countdown of cuteness has featured cute but prickly, sweet but shy, gentle but giant, and all kinds of fur-covered snuggly. But our number one cutest animal has it all. Cute, cuddly, sweet, and gentle. Ladies and gentlemen, B-Rat, the baby sloth. Now, B-Rat is a baby three-toed sloth. Yeah, wanna give me a high three? Hi, three. There you go. I love the gray and whitish coloration of the fur and that very distinct raccoon looking mask on the face. Now, baby sloths make a really interesting noise and B-Rad's not making it, but they do go. I'm talking to you. I can speak sloth. That right there is a Cecropia leaf. Let's see if B-Rat is hungry. Oh, he's going for it. Oh. oh, goodness. Do you see that? Uh, I don't know what's cuter, the baby sloth itself or the baby sloth eating a leaf. Right. B-Rat, I'm gonna just save that for later. You know what, I think I could spend my entire afternoon hanging out with a sloth. Just you and me, B-Rad. We could go on little walks together. I bet you'd fit in my pocket. I don't think they want me to put you in my pocket, but you would look really cute in my front shirt pocket. You like that, you like that idea? I think he's signing to me right now. He's saying, man, I'd love to hang out. You could come on adventures. You can meet the crew. You can meet Mario. You could meet Mark. We could all be buddies. What do you think? Whoa, it's hard to believe you can fit so much cuteness in such a tiny package. I think it's safe to say that B-Rad continues to melt our hearts and hails as the cutest animal we have ever featured on camera. Over the years, we have gotten up close with countless animals that most consider creepy, crawly, and in some cases, living nightmares. However, we have also been fortunate to find and filter in a world full of cuteness. So we hope you enjoyed this look back at some of the most adorable animals ever featured on the Brave Wilderness Channel. 
If you enjoyed this mega overload of cuteness, make sure to go back and watch the episode where we compare the two-toed and the three-toed sloth. And don't forget, subscribe and click the notification bell so you can join me and the crew on our next wild adventure.